No Explain. Wi-Fi outside my house can get inside he got, my house. He bought all that tin foil, aluminum foil you could buy at the How store, does, and he wrapped his whole house. He doesn't so, just wrap his head in now, it. What's, he wraps here's what's, his whole house in it. I live in a fantasy world. Right? <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> and I would like you to not step on the flowers. Oh, I'm going to step on the flowers <laughs> all, all day. Flowers. Let me ask you this. On a serious note, I don't actually do that. I hope not. <laughs> I if you did, I'm going to break your laptop. I, I'm just kidding. Yeah. I'm, uh, it's in my notes app on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> First and foremost, any email that you send, if it has user credentials attached to it, consider it compromised. Really? Ooh, you screwed. <laughs> <laughs> Period. Does anybody else feel like Dropbox is not actually in a data center, but it's actually just a guy with some folders? <laughs> <laughs> you just drag it around here. Oh. With how long it takes sometimes? <laughs> Hold on a second. Hold on a second. I know it's here somewhere. All right. He's like, he's Aaron. Like, he's like, Aaron file needs... <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Let me start with like the Z's. Uh, Z. <laughs> Everyone, welcome to the Think Fresh Move Forward podcast. Today we're talking about cybersecurity and how pointless it is. <laughs> <laughs> there's no real threat. And there's how there's no real, no threat. real threat. <laughs> Uh, nobody's out to get your information. Nor, not, nor an antivirus hey, has you covered. Hey, you're not that special. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, no, we're talking about cybersecurity today and how uh, how how really as, important I make that in my life. And uh, but first, we're going to talk about the news. But as long as you have an Apple product, you'll never be hacked. Yeah. I'm just trying to get him to say something. <laughs> today, <laughs> today we're doing our very best to trigger Co trigger Cody in the that's, worst possible that, that's, way. That's the one misconception about Apple. It's like, oh, I bet Apple product. Oh, because oh, I can't get hacked. Oh, God. I don't get viruses. You don't get the Trojan horse on uh, Mac just devices. Just throw terminology out there. Just yes. keep throwing terminology. I'm doing all the buzzwords. <laughs> Keylogger. Are, Key are, worms, are worms still a thing? Yes. Absolutely. What is, uh, What's a cookie? What's a cookie? Well, hold They're on, delicious hold on. desserts. I have a million. I have a million questions, but if we don't get to the news, we're never going to. Let's do that. Let's do that. <laughs> the right. news. The news is important. Yeah. All so right. what's happening, Ryan? Aaron, if you want to bring up that news article, this is just how another, I would say, dent in Meta or Face Meta. I had it right the first time. Um, was forced to sell their GIF platform. GIF. <laughs> It's called GIF. GIF is peanut butter. It's even spelt J I F. So, Seat on the shelf. So, so tell me about this. This is a no debate thing. So it's a following an antitrust order. Uh, I'm just wanted to point out that how Facebook kind of screwed this one up and is losing quite a bit of money. Three hundred and forty-seven million dollars they're losing. Granted, I don't know when did Facebook buy GIF. GIF. <laughs> when did Giffy. Facebook? Right. Giffy. By yeah. Giffy. <laughs> Giffy. 2012. So yeah. it may be loss on based on those numbers, but in that time between, they may have made a ton of profit off yeah, the Yeah, that so makes that it worth it. Yeah, I, you know, it, be they were for, and they were, they're being forced to sell for what? Antitrust? Is that what you said? Yeah. A lawsuit? So, in the UK, though. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's interesting to me, right? Like, you can't dictate much of a... Uh, a buying you don't have much you don't have much selling power right when the government's saying you have to break up right mm. so now the people who are buying it from you know that y you have to sell well, it to them i right? stopped so. using it because i use tenor's giphy platform versus giphy because facebook got rid of a lot of gifts that you would think yeah aren't appropriate. friendly appropriate yeah, exactly. i like the one i use because it's all friendly the, yeah. Unappropriate. Unappropriate. Items. <laughs> Inappropriate. And swear words and stuff. Inappropriate so. only. <laughs> so. Yeah. The bad adjectives we all like using. Um, and then so also. So what's their answer now? Are they going to still have gifts on the platform or are they going to. It's just Shutterstock owns it now. Okay. So they're going to just owns use it. Giphy? Huh. Mm -hmm. what, Sh Shutterstock seems like they own a lot of stuff. But not as much as Meta. Yeah. But this is all following also that. <clears throat> Uh, Microsoft's uh, which acquisition of Activision, um, acquisition of Activision, say that really fast ten times, uh, still hasn't gone through yet. That's that large sixty-eight billion dollar transaction. And that's because of antitrust concerns. Uh, it? It's that I don't know if it's antitrust, but it's more monopoly in a way. But I still don't see how that's a monopoly. Um, yeah, that would I mean that would be antitrust. So uh, you know, Activision's I, like five games right now. It's like 
Yeah. You have Call of Duty. Do they own like a certain amount of the market share though? Like, do they own? No. Oh, really? uh, I mean, so you have Call of Duty. I mean, that seems like a World of big. Warcraft, Diablo. Oh wow, those are huge. Yeah, I mean, yeah, so but it then feels you look. Like... How many games are on Steam? You're like, yeah, yeah but the, that, of... yeah, yeah, but you have more games, money. So. You they have, have more money mo- in Call of Duty, but that doesn't mean you have a monopoly of the gaming industry. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I don't know though if like the daily user count is like massive. That doesn't make that's it much. What I think, that doesn't yeah. make you, that doesn't make you have an opposite. It just means you have better marketing. And well, <laughs> well, but, all, but I think yeah, I, I think, get that right. And you have but a better product. Probably, yeah. I, I would see. I would. I, I, I would. It would make sense to me that the the amount of money spent is probably disproportionate. I'm not saying right or wrong. I'm saying, but the amount of money spent on those games is massively disproportionate because you can... And they're still broken. It pisses it's, me off. It's wild how much people spend on things and games today that are entirely cosmetic. Yeah, like Fortnite and buying skins, skins and stuff. Yeah. I'm j- it's, yeah. I, it's just beyond me. I'm just like... like that but see, that's another thing. You have episode. Epic Games, which is not owned by Microsoft. That's one of the... was you know does millions upon millions, actually billions of transactions. Yeah. Um, and then you have all these other studios that make games and steam steam is just a platform to buy games essentially the host and then to download said files yeah and, and there's run them. tens what is- of thousands of games on that platform then you have ea and steam is not owned by microsoft no okay and there's uh wh- wh- who's epic games uh like fortnite uh okay. is is one of them uh okay. they have also have a lot of like phone apps as well okay um i believe uh, unreal and en- no yeah that's unreal engine, unreal engine. as well they own that that's their thing. Oh, Epic Games owns Unreal Engine. Mm-hmm. That's their thing. Oh wow. Yeah. Actually, you can actually, Aaron, can you just search that? Uh, Epic Games, uh, Unreal uh, owns Unreal. I just want to confirm. Yeah, because Unreal has applications yeah. beyond uh, the game. I believe. Right? Theoretically. Mm-hmm. Well, it's an engine. Yeah. yeah. It says it right there on the top it's right. Like it's one of the gaming physics engines. Yeah. They Epic have. Games yeah. does un, uh, own Unreal Engine, which a lot of games developer. Yeah. It's developed by Epic Games, yeah. Yeah, so C++. Um, so I don't see that as a monopoly over the entire game just because you have yeah. uh, a certain customer base, but sure. Activision could, you know, Call of Duty could fail next uh, year. Yeah. Will it? Probably not. Because it's such, so as, it's such so as a, money into it. Well, it's it's a, it's such a user digest. loyal base. Now, yeah. it is starting to... It has, has some of its lowest player count Ever, ever before because they just don't fix the game <laughs> so people are finding other games to play or they go to battlefield which is uh ea um or they go to fortnite or they go to csgo which is counter-strike um and then there's all types of other games that are coming out that are not owned by activision and again it's five things now granted you have my I, I take it when you could take those five games and you put with microsoft's games but then you have what halo well, and that would be the concern, Halo's right? Not That's Microsoft anymore. That would be why That's they would have antitrust no, they, concerns. They still own that studio, I believe. I don't know that off the top of my head. I thought they sold it. No, I believe Bungie, Bungie Studios sold to 313, and I think Microsoft bought that. I think. I don't know. Yeah. Um, or 343. 343? 343. Yeah, 343 is part of Xbox Game Studios. Yeah, 343, okay. So it, yeah. it is owned by Microsoft. Okay, so, so Anyways, Cody... Let's let's play a game real quick. Oh how can wait? How can my Xbox get hacked? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's play a game real quick. You tell me if this is a good idea or a bad idea. It's a bad. Um, it's all a right, terrible idea. So I'm 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 bad at remembering passwords. Okay. Okay. So what I do is when I cr- when I create a password and account, I create an email that has all the all the account information, and then I email that that uh, that email to myself and then i with all the information on it what are you smoking so so that i can <laughs> i can easily look it up and find my password what, what are you smoking that seems like a good idea this has to be fake you can't this can't be real this is the it, guy this that is killed, real this is the guy that killed a cat <laughs> <laughs> allegedly allegedly I did, not, <laughs> did not kill a cat being in the same vicinity of the cat does not mean he killed the cat yeah, right <laughs> that made me sound so much more guilty <laughs> oh my god <laughs> I absolutely I did, did not, not kill have a cat. sexual. Cl- <laughs> Here, here's what it is. Here's what it is. The cat saw you, <laughs> and, I am and then jumped. Life. <laughs> and oh then jumped. 
<laughs> so what does that say? <laughs> you have a face for radio. God. <laughs> I think it means uh, I think it means that that cat had it out for me and it made it cause problems for me. But the question like is, I wasted so. all nine lives on you. Anyways, <laughs> anyways, so the question, geez, so, I, don't so, even know how to, I don't even know how to attack that horrible fu- idea. <laughs> horrible idea. <laughs> bleep, bleep, big old bleep bear. Um, he's trying to leave first, a, a, first a trail of bread cl- yes, crumbs, crumbs for the potential to, hacker. Yes, absolutely. Too. Um, <laughs> if you made it this far, where to Hansel but, and Gretel. So but, l- let me and, ask you, and, let me and, ask you this. Let me ask you this on a serious note. I don't actually do that. I hope not. <laughs> As if you did, I'm going to break your laptop. I, I'm just kidding. Yeah. I'm, it's in my notes app on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> so let's let's start there. Let's start with the email. Um, any? Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, so so that, that that is part of the question. Let me uh, let me let me phrase it so I can actually sure. set you up for an, an, an actual conversation. Yeah. Um, uh, where where are the biggest concerns? Right. Where 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 are people? typically the most vulnerable for cyber cyber attacks or, or, and identity theft people uh, or businesses or both i would say people because i'm a people and and uh, <laughs> uh i'm, I'm not people? i'm not good at business so <laughs> no, i'm just kidding uh yeah i would say people okay yeah. um and well, then we'll get to business. I, I, gotta, I gotta address your whole little my brain won't allow me to ignore that whole little rabbit hole you made me go down to. so <laughs> um first and foremost any email that you send if it has user credentials attached to it, consider it compromised. Really? Ooh, you screwed. <laughs> <laughs> Period. Because it, once it's out there, it's out there. Anybody can, you know, there's, there's certain things that like Google and Microsoft put into place that try to encrypt it. It's not always guaranteed. So, like, don't do that with your social security. Absolutely not. And, uh, so there's actually different levels of... My favorite is when we have clients text me an image of their credit card. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> or someone on Facebook or even emails me their credit card number. How is... All the time. How is... Okay, I so, say, please so don't do this. This scenario, mm-hmm. how is that compromised? How, how can somebody get to that? Because all it takes is that email SMS account checking. being hacked once, and then it's compromised. Okay. Well, that's right. one way. Or the texting. I can do what's called a man in the middle uh, flipper. You know, little dongle. You have this little device called like a flipper, um, and you can actually uh, do what's called a man-in-the-middle attack. And what that essentially does is saying, "Hey, I can act like a bunch of different Wi-Fi access points," and a bunch of people in the office go, "Oh, ah, hey, cool, yes, free Wi-Fi," that. and then now everyone answers to me, and I get all their traffic. So I literally, can you can set up in a start. I messages through you can set up in Wi-Fi. A, uh, well, that, well um, iMessage is a whole other thing. That's okay. there. They have really solid encryption. Okay. Um, yeah. But so, the SMS hijacking itself is saying, for instance, like, hey, uh, I just texted you the number. Here's your authentication code, right? Okay. That that form of authentication is okay, but can be compromised with the man-in-the-middle attack with what's called SIM jacking, where someone copies your SIM card and then takes your phone number mm. and then starts using so, your phone number for malintent. I uh, Like, you yeah. want to avoid using, like, free Wi-Fi at Starbucks or Panera Bread. Always use a VPN. Yes. If you're on if you're on public Wi-Fi. Really? Someone can, Absolutely. they don't even have to be in the restaurant. They could be out in the parking lot yeah. with oh, a yeah. device. By the way. And people will log into it or thinking because they're getting. We need f- to adjust your guys' radios on your Wi-Fi antenna because I can go across. I was at a client's office across the street, and I can see your access point. It's that access. Your Wi-Fi router is that's a dope, that powerful. That's a dope wow. router. Yeah. I, was, I opened my laptop. I was like, there's no way. I am connected still, to the internet right now. And it's right still now. slow. Yep. <laughs> we'll fix that. Don't worry. We'll fix all that. Um, yeah. Okay. So where are, people, where are people the most vulnerable? Like, where, where, what is the most common form of, uh, uh, of identity theft through uh, or just, just compromise? It's a lot. Well, being lazy is the biggest one, right? <clears throat> Not shredding paper. People go in the trash can. You know, but that's just free information right there. I just just go garbage dumping, and I can mm-hmm. I can know someone's address, all their health information. I know what medication they're taking. I understand every single thing about that person within that day. I mean, think how much trash you throw away. Now, if you have kids, I know what your kids do. That's scary, right? So, uh, shred all your papers, burn them if you can. Well, you're not supposed to burn stuff in Virginia, but you, know, whatever, you can. You, know, you just have wood, to do it in a certain amount of wood time. Wood stove, right? I have a wood stove. I don't throw any of my paper. I, I burn it all in wood stove. And Kinlan, right? So yeah. cool. Um, Cody lives out in the country. I live out in the. He's got a burn barrel. I, out I back. work. I work. I do actually. <laughs> do yeah, burn absolutely. <laughs> um, so leave it to the IT guy who has yes. a Faraday cage around yes. his house. Yes. Yeah. Do so, you? Yes. You have a fair. 
Explain this to me. Explain <laughs> how no explain Wi-Fi outside my house can get inside he got, my house. He bought all that tin foil, aluminum foil you bought at the how store, does, and he wrapped his whole house. He doesn't so, just wrap his head in now, it. What's, he wraps his whole house in it. So this was interesting. <laughs> I was uh, I was on uh, I was shooting a movie uh, last year, and the guy we were working with works for the CIA. He mm-hmm. was he's an agent, and he actually had Faraday cages for phones. Yep. And mm-hmm. uh, so he was a consultant on set, and he was like, uh, "They do them for key, your car keys as well." That's so interesting. So, so uh, explain can, to me how a Faraday, them. explain to me how your Faraday, how Faraday cages work, uh, what they are, and then like tell me how you got one around your house. In that order. Jammers. <laughs> okay, Faraday cage is is a jammer. I mean, well, Faraday cage is pretty much a metal box as it doesn't allow any in or out signals. Okay. Right. So you can do that around your house by pretty much essentially putting copper around your house in a certain way to where it can't get out. And you, p- so so you put copper around your house mm-hmm. so that Wi-Fi can't get in. His house looks like a birdcage. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, is that what is that? How does that look? Is that is that to a wire? Is that just wire that yeah. you have around? Yeah, you can put it in your drywall. In your drywall. Yep. How? Oh, this is wild. To me. <laughs> uh, I, like like is it is it just you can't a, see it? Is it a single nope. wire? No, is it's it a like, mesh. It's a mesh. You make it really thin. Yeah, really thin mesh. Like in a lot of movies. So you have it in. S- so so so. How do you get around like paint and and stuff like that? Like I, I put you plaster, paint over I it. Plaster over it. Oh, yeah, okay. And you paint it over it. So you so you put uh you put the the mesh all over your walls, yep. everywhere in your house. Yep. That's crazy. It seems like that'd be expensive. Yeah. Not really. No. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then uh, so then then you then you plaster over it and then you paint. Yep. And so forever your house is. Pretty much. Yeah. Yep. You can get even more, you can get even more fancy with it and put electrical current through it and make yourself an electromagnet. But Did that you would ha- just ruin everything. Was that so. a job requirement for you to do that? No. Okay. That was just a hobby. Personal. I wanted, I wanted to see how well I can disrupt. I mean, it's technically not a genuine Faraday kit. It's not around the doors. Mm-hmm. But no signals can get in or out. Plus, I have a metal roof, too. So yeah. why wouldn't I try to do that? I already had shitty... Uh, Cell phone signal, anyways. So, have you seen the movie Enemy? So your Wi-Fi you enemies? Yeah. No, no, not enemy. Yeah. Uh, enemy of the state. Yeah. With Will Smith and Gene Hackman. No. Of course you haven't. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he, Gene Hackman, who uh, former spy, uh, hides most of his stuff in, uh, or has been able to remain hidden because he was inside. Uh, all his stuff was inside a Faraday cage, and literally it's just a metal grate. Yep. Box. It's pretty much. It's pretty That's much just need. a room that prevents. Any signal signals that you don't want in in the agent that we uh, we were working with he had a bag yeah it was like he was it's just, it was just, just an just aluminum little bag and you can you just like just drop it in there and yeah it looks like it looked like a normal yep like a super normal looking bag yep. but I was just like, like a bank teller's bag so yes that's yep. what it looked like yeah it was like a bank teller's bag but it, it had yeah so um, think of um so this is an RFID blocking wallet even though there's no electronics in this other than of course the Apple tag. <clears throat> Your credit cards can easily be stolen because you just have a simple metal clip. Yep. You have a leather wallet because uh, I've seen it. Someone can literally just walk by you. They don't even have to. The they don't have to. They don't have to pickpocket. They can literally just have a device in their pocket and walk by you and copy mm-hmm. all your credit card information. Someone that has did that in uh, New York subway. Stuck it on the inside of the and just started scanning people's credit cards. So you know, like the the. Where you just tap your card that has mm-hmm. a, a signal yeah, yeah, that yeah. releases. Yeah. That's literally what it's doing, and it's yep. just copying your information, and then your card's information. You can prevent that with an RFID blocker. So essentially, it's like a mini Faraday cage for your. The leather cards. wallet seems to work okay because I try to use I try to use the cards through the wallet all the time, and it never works. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because the signal on those on those credit card machines are is weaker. Are <laughs> terrible. Yeah, they're weak. Um, so I wouldn't. But just, they have a stronger signal in, in like those, those receivers. Yep. And the same thing with your keys. They make uh, Faraday cages for your keys because the second you hit that sig- the uh, unlock the code. someone could literally if someone wanted to steal your car they literally could be outside your house with that capture device so put it put it this way um your if, car will be stolen they'll just drive off with it if it's, it's <laughs> not if but when if someone wants to do it they're going to yeah right uh my ideology is if it's difficult for me to do something it's got to be really difficult for somebody else like if i die it's because you're so I much feel, smarter I feel bad for my wife. Because <laughs> you're so much smarter. <laughs> Stop. I just make things annoyingly complex. He hasn't no killed reason. a cat yet. Okay. So, so, right. so, <laughs> so let's go back. Let's go back to this question. So it's kind of like bringing it back to yeah. the, the people, right? 
aside from wrapping their homes in copper, right? Sure. So <laughs> where is the protect? So yeah. So yeah, like passwords, don't be, don't right? Don't be lazy. Like, okay. That's the biggest one. And when it comes, it is, it is, it is the yeah, battle. Don't email, your, don't email yourself. Don't email yourself. Your, <laughs> it is the battle of protecting. It's like your money. What's more important than your information to keep it to yourself or to somebody that you trust? Absolutely, right? So if you don't want people to know about it, destroy it and or encrypt it. That's the simplest way to protect the majority of your data. How can someone encrypt anything? The majority of your stuff, like the, his iPhone, technically is encrypted. Okay. Technically That's speaking. what, like, WhatsApp right? is always touting, like, end-to-end -end encryption. encryption. Which I, kind I would, of I will, isn't. I don't believe anything that WhatsApp says. That platform like, is beyond. I'm just, I'm just spewing off with that uh, the commercial with the bird, right, where they're going to yep. send the, the – have you seen that? Where they send the bird with the message? Nope. Can't use Indian windows. He hasn't seen any movie ever. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Any references? Any references? Ever. <laughs> Which we've discussed um, is a problem. It needs to be fixed. <laughs> but you know, do an audit on yourself. You know, you have, you know, you check your credit score every once in a while. You're curious about your credit score. You're curious about your finances. You're always doing strategy planning for your finances. Do the same thing. Is, is your my email compromised? Well, is your credit locked? Like your credit file? Always lock your credit. Yep. I don't know. The the, yep. the delay in your response answers my question. <laughs> right. Go to Experian.com. Sign up. It's 20 bucks a month. It is. Lock your credit. Highly credits. recommend. I've been paying it for, for years. Right. That's, that is the biggest thing for personal, not business. Identity theft is the biggest and number one threat to personal security. I have a credit card freeze and, um, uh, yeah, credit freeze and then a lock on my credit report. Yeah, that, that's that's actually very important because it's it's a simple way to prevent someone from getting Ryan's too point, far to file or, like, they have enough of your personal information to – to apply for credit cards, apply for, yep. hell, you know, um, uh, big ticket purchases, right? Bank loans, all kinds of stuff, right? That they just need a basic amount, a kernel of information, right? Look at that credit score. Um, 812. To, there you go. Nice. <laughs> so, uh, so that's a very simple thing you can do. And, like, because if somebody steals your credit card, right, most credit card companies, assuming it's a credit card, not a debit card, you have – protection of against that right like oh credit card you can show it's stolen and you get all that money back right but if somebody's opening lines of credit on your that can impact it's very score, hard to right? get rid yeah. of too yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah, yeah my, uh, my wife worked for the irs for uh like seven years or so and uh she was just talking about all the hoops that once your identity gets stolen or once you it's once like you a have, year uh, before anything can happen not right. even no, she, it's like the uh, the amount, uh, how long it follows you is forever, mm -hmm. and also like uh, the amount of hoops that you end up having having to jump through with the IRS for the rest of your life. She said is crazy. It shocks me that your wife worked at the IRS and tells you all these horror stories, and then you don't even have a credit card freeze. Listen on your credit report. I, I live in a fantasy world, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> <laughs> and I would like you to not step on the flowers. Oh, I'm going to step on the flowers <laughs> all, all day. <laughs> don't, don't burn my flower bed, man. What, what's Nate Bargatze talking about? He talks about how in any relationship there needs to be a dreamer and then there needs to be <laughs> the a other realist. one that's the a realist. realist. <laughs> <laughs> Who do you think I am? <laughs> Neither. <laughs> if you had to guess. <laughs> <laughs> Aaron's walking through the lollipop forest like no one's yeah. trying to steal anything from me. <laughs> People are awesome. <laughs> Go to Candy Mountain, Charlie. Candy so, Mountain. So, okay, uh, we talked about passwords. What are some, like, practical tools that somebody could do to have better passwords? So, I mean, there's two ways. You either write it down in a black ledger and never show it to anybody and put it in a safe, which is archaic and old, mm -hmm. but it works, yeah. as long as you never use the same password for anything ever. <laughs> which is very hard to do because it depends on what industry you're in. You're going to eventually I, there, repeat yourself, mm -hmm. right? I have more. I'm pretty sure that I have more accounts than I have lived seconds in my life. So that's a lot. I H just how old are you? <laughs> <laughs> how old are I'm you? I'm 35. That's more than a billion seconds. So I doubt it. So, but that's <laughs> the way it feels. Like I feel like literally, if you do anything online, you're going to ask be, be before you log off. In an hour of being on the to internet, create a password. you have had, you have been asked to create three to four accounts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Can we just, can we just not? Can we just well, it's starting to change. Everything's going to what's called single sign on, right? Like you just remember one master password. Like logging right. on through Google or right. logging on through Facebook. Yep. Which I love. Oh yeah. It's great. Yeah. Uh, assuming that doesn't get hacked. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. 
Nobody wants to hack me. <laughs> Remember, it's if, but when. Yeah. Right. A yeah. lot of banks, though, are, are using, um, and it's going to end here shortly, <clears throat> your voice is your password. Yeah, no. But it's now it only takes an AI. Can All it needs is less than three seconds of your voice being recorded. It can now recreate your voice almost perfectly. Yeah. And hackers have already been utilizing this where people have been spoofing family members and calling family members mm-hmm. and almost having a conversation with them to divulge information. Wow. And again, more older people are going to be susceptible that, to that. That's called yeah. social engineering. Yeah. yeah. But using AI to help do that. So that's what the, about, what there about was face actually ID. A, What's going to happen with face ID? Like is face ID like able well, to be replicated? Well, face ID is a little that's bit different. different. That's a mathematical equation actually, because that's actually scanning your face and taking mm-hmm. the, like the regions on your there, face. So you're saying there's enough like differentiating touch points to that to like. Well, you can't. Well, I mean, back when replicate. it first came out, I, re- I remember when uh, Microsoft was Vista first came out, and they first like had uh, oh, who was our high school physics is it, teacher. Is it possible um, just to hold a, a picture of yourself in front of a? You, that's what I'm talking about. So when when ID when Face ID first came out, we were playing with the idea when you took a photo of yourself and put it in front of the camera, and we got it to work. Now it's probably yeah, that. it's probably measuring the distance from the camera. Yeah, yeah there's there's multiple touch there's, points throughout your so, face. So if you take a, a a video recording of someone looking at their iPhone, their iPhone's just doing this constantly, taking pictures of your face, constantly. So it's, it's so and it, and it's not a picture; it's actually an equation. It's actually taking a mathematical like map of your face and saying, Hey, this is the value of your face. This is who you are. This is your face ID. Obviously it's way more complex than that, but essentially that's what it is. And it's only on your device. So like I, I like Apple, but I don't, but they're, they're encryption. <laughs> it's a love hate relationship. It is a very love hate relationship. Um, With any multi-billion just, dollar corporation. Keep a lot of stuff. I love Amazon, but also hate um, Amazon. But, but like but your that face gatekeeping ID, could be a positive. Well, thing yes and no. I mean, like when it comes to like the blue text message, like uh-huh. everything else, like that is uh, an unnecessary gatekeeping kind of thing. Like because where uh, iMessage is actually using an archaic um, texting model versus Android devices. But since you know that's just their marketing scheme, like iMessage is our thing. Like, yeah, there's no, one person in this okay. room that's still green. Yeah, Aaron, yeah. Aaron and I might, I might <laughs> switch because I don't have any other Apple devices anymore. The only reason I ever did Apple because I had Apple everything. Now I'm Linux and Microsoft everything. I don't need Apple anymore. I have no reason for it. Yes, you do. So you need to be blue because <laughs> so it's nice. better. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, just because so, you're blue and the text messages is more efficient, <laughs> that's why. Basically, what you're saying is, like, we're not in a place now where AI can replicate no. somebody's no. face to that degree. I was well, impressed, you have deep, like... you have deep fakes and stuff like that, but I'm talking yeah. about, again, like, the for, face for, ID for aspect. Face ID. And, and you're like, saying you know, that's stored on or my particular your, device. Or your device, and, and it it's doesn't encrypted. exist on the iCloud yeah. or other. But couldn't other. technically yeah. someone use, because... It, like you said, it's a mathematical equation. Mm-hmm. If someone used it, had enough photos of your face and video, deep faked, essentially create a three no, D model. Your face is constantly changing every single day. But you just need one. Mm-mm. Every single time, you even if you don't sign in, you touch that pad and you log. I know, in. but there's times though. I even put glasses on it. It's still. Yep. It rec- but here's my point. This is what I'm getting at. Someone does a deep fake, but then they do a 3D print of that person's face, which has all <laughs> those exact touch points that person would need, and go. Hold up. Um, <laughs> I think technically that could work. Again, I, like I said, it's As more complex than that because skin is translucent; it's actually not flat. So on a 3D model, I don't think that would work because of how the light's bouncing off our skin. Again, it's I mean, mm-hmm. to my brief understanding of how Face ID works, that's my understanding of it. It takes a map of your face and then assigns it to a value, and then that's how you get logged in. Yeah. Mm. But interesting. But to do a 3D model is kind of crazy. So yeah. what are what are some uh, or, or what? like the movies you take the person's eyeball out and <laughs> put it on the scanner? <laughs> Retina scan complete. <laughs> so okay, so so uh, tools for passwords. Right. What would be a good? What do you recommend? That There's a use? lot of them. Mm-hmm. Um, LastPass. Oh, uh, don't use LastPass. <laughs> That's why. I um, said it. The only reason I say don't use LastPass is it, they got compromised. Well, they got well. I mean, again, it's it's not a it's not a fact of if but when. I mean, every there there are very very high value targets. So obviously they're eventually going. Something's going to happen. But that was a failure of employee retention on their end. They had some issues with security on their end. But the vaults themselves technically aren't compromised. Because uh, for a computer to compromise these, they would have to do like a brute force attack on these things for decades. 
And by that time, hopefully, not Aaron, I would have changed their password by now in a decade. If not, then, yeah, I would be worried. But the majority of people that have um, last pass would also have two-factor authentication. You need both to get into your master vault. So in reality, the vaults are still technically protected. However, if I have a what's called a zero trust platform, that slogan's just tossed out everywhere where no one module knows something else, that should, shouldn't have happened. It did, so that means their model is not correct. So don't use LastPass. Um, I mean, you have Dashlane, you have Keeper Security, you have KeyPass, which KeyPass is actually a local version. By the way, hey, Aaron, but, we bought a year subscription for... Uh, Oh yeah, ten you people. Get, you get one. You're gonna be getting keeper because and you you're, get one you have an too. email fresh from media. Absolutely, you're gonna be using. Um, keeper. We'll walk you through it. What is we'll keeper? I, yep. So, so it's a password. It's a password manager. manager. Oh, okay. Yep. If any of these companies Thanks. are listening, <laughs> we're open to affiliates. Uh, Marketing. Marketing right? yeah, yeah, so. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like when Except it comes LastPass. when it comes to two step verification, a lot of people it is annoying sometimes. But like I have the I use the Google Authenticator app. And I have, I have Google Authenticator app. I still have the last pass Authenticator I have, app. Which I'm not going to show my phone, but, but I have yeah. so many. And then I remember setting it up on your phone for MailChimp, and that was your first one. Yeah. Because <laughs> I don't use <laughs> Google Authenticator or whatever. So. Well, what, I, what the thing is, what do you – that's the question. What That's, like, one of the main ones. Probably SMS. So, so, so like, I for any, for any websites, them. I'm using Google suggested passwords, right, which are long alphanumeric passwords, right? Which and then and then two factor I use for like cell phone uh, SMS texting right which yep. again uh, is probably not best practice well, right I mean but, it's becoming you know. the new standard yeah. everything nowadays is always like well you need SMS like yeah. that is the new standard there is if you're if you're going to a website that doesn't have 2FA I would be surprised mm-hmm. most companies are sending that out nowadays yeah. as a mean yeah. to protect their assets well and that's a conversation i have with clients all the time specifically is meta and the way meta is structured everything in meta are all the assets business pages ad uh ad accounts that are all connected to credit cards right uh are run through individual people's accounts so if the super admin on a facebook account right is hacked right, then that entire business's back-end assets are all in jeopardy, right? And that's why Facebook's dealing with a ton of this right now. Mm-hmm. And, and it's, it's usually to run ads overseas. So it happens overnight where yep. a business owner might wake up and see six grand in credit card charges. We've had this happen to our clients. And it was just because ads were run in Vietnam Did overnight. And, I mean, it's just thousands were charged. And getting... Getting that refunded from a credit card company is not difficult, but getting it removed from your ad account sometimes is, mm. which means that now you can't run new ads yep. until this is resolved, right? Yep. And, you know, it's just, it, and Meta's support is terrible. Didn't you find uh, a website, Ryan, I think we talked about this last time, but is that privacy.com where you can have digital credit cards? Yeah, it's called privacy.com. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. So actually, can you bring it up real quick, Aaron? So I think it's privacy. that's what we've so, presented to the right. client that so, had an issue with it. Yeah. It's still de- it's it's not a it's still technically a debit card. Uh, well, you have to attach a debit card or bank account to it. Mm-hmm. So you need to hot make. No, you miss out sure. on the miles. But I mean, mm-hmm. for added you know ease of mind, like I would definitely add that to a, when it com- a Google Ads account or a Facebook Ads account. When it comes so when it comes to like recurring transactions, like tiny ones, like um, streaming services, it um it makes sense to use that to like almost in a way you can manage and see yeah. all your stuff and then if you decide to cancel it in you, you could just cancel it and yep. yeah and just because the, you were talking about sometimes where a credit card expires meta whoever just gets the new credit card from the yeah, credit card, which is so ridiculous yeah it's crazy with yeah. the privacy uh, dot com aspect um you don't have that issue a uh, bright yeah privacy did you know that by the way aaron have you heard this that that a few years back they passed legislation that allows uh, large companies that are consistently getting credit cards for renewals to access that information directly from the credit card company and the bank. So basically if you uh, had a credit card expire, right, and a new credit card is generated for you, right, with a new expiration date, right, uh, that number will automatically be shared with companies like Netflix and others gym memberships other other large companies awesome that's without really your permission without your permission yeah, it's but that's automatically really con- shared but that's really convenient 
I know, right? <laughs> yeah. It's convenient Before for that, them. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like, wait a minute, we can just but like charge people forever. With this, think of this as more like a digital <laughs> gift card. We can get subscriptions forever. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you can set a limit on this, so you can do like a monthly limit of like 150 bucks or whatever. So if your card does get somehow stolen or compromised, that card will always be declined if someone tried to do a two hundred dollar transaction. Uh, and if it does get compromised, you just hit delete and you create a new one. Yep. Um, so when it comes to online, this is a safer way uh, to do uh, transactions online yep. uh, versus keying in your credit card. But even Apple's um, uh, titanium credit card, the digital one, um, the numbers, the CIV, is revolving nice. on my phone. Uh, it changes. That's awesome. uh, it, you can choose to do it or not. Yeah. I just enable it. I, I'm not going to use the card. Uh, I got the card because, like, oh, I'm going to get the high yield savings account because it's a but now, since they do it with Goldman Sachs, I actually have a Goldman Sachs bank account. It's now matching, so I don't need the card. So right. I have another credit Whatever. card that's cool. pointless. <laughs> but cool. Pointless. Whatever. And it's not titanium, by the way. Apple's credit card is not titanium. It is aluminum. They lie. They and I know lie. this because we make metal business cards. <laughs> <laughs> this podcast is sponsored. <laughs> it's sponsored by <laughs> Lux Metal <laughs> Card. Uh, so then there's what? Phishing, right? And other attacks or other ways <sighs> of collecting yeah. information. So... Like, I tell, um, I, and is this a good rule of thumb? I tell my mom, whenever she gets a random text out of the blue or you don't know who email, it is, don't click on it. an email out of the blue, don't click on it, right? And if it's from a brand you are with. It's not the Nigerian prince so like, that emailed me that said I have millions of dollars exactly, in for me. right. Michael Scott, right? <laughs> prince is so, a fool. So if it's, like, from PayPal, right, you mm-hmm. know, and you think it might be actually from PayPal, right, the best thing to do is to not click on the link, not follow the button to wherever. Just go to PayPal directly, right? Yep. Type in or like log in to PayPal's website, and whatever notification they sent you will be reflected on your dashboard there, most right. likely, right? Like if you need to update something or yep. if you know some. If you have the app on your phone, you'll get notified with the app. Yeah, there you, you know, go. Push notification yeah. with the app itself. Yep. Um, yeah. So email. Uh, good rule of thumb for anything. I mean, if you don't know who it is, don't open it. Right, and like I actually, I just I don't know how many emails I have. I have so many. Um, all my email for my businesses are so filtered that my inbox is my to-do box. Because if I don't know who it is, it's going straight to spam. And then like once a month, I go through my spam. I go, oh shit, like I miss something, whatever. Yeah, yeah. But ideally, if I miss something, I'm going to call somebody like, hey, did you follow up with this or whatever? Then I'll be fine. Mm-hmm. Personal emails, you if you didn't know, Aaron. Um, uh, you can actually do email plus whatever at gmail.com and you can have a separate email without making a new email account. So what? say for instance, you want uh, a login for Netflix. You can do Aaron plus Netflix at gmail.com. And then if Netflix ever gets compromised and you ever start getting random emails to Aaron plus Netflix.com. That would have been really then, good to know. Yeah. <laughs> so you can, you can do that. So you can do so. I wait, actually, wait. So, 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 give me an example. So, so I have. Uh, I'm not going to say the real one, but I have email plus finance, email plus entertainment, email plus. Are you saying junk. you have to put the full email? So, like, I have an old like my junk. We can do you know my junk James, Gmail. James plus junk right? at gmail dot com. James plus entertainment. And you use James Plus Entertainment for every single entertainment HBO Max. Yeah, Netflix, I, I get that. I get that. Yep. So like, so just like and mechanically, if, right? If my email was yep. J, you know, Crittenden, whatever, yep. right? At Gmail dot com. Yep. I I put that full amount in, yep. and then say plus, and then entertainment. Yep. Before the at. Before the at. Yep. All before the at. Yep. And right? it forwards to your inbox. Oh, interesting. So okay. Apple does it. Right? I mean, when you sign up to a, uh, an app and it says, do you want to keep your email private? Mm-hmm. Right? And it does whatever and just does it generates a random email. Same thing. Ah. And they just forward your email to you. So, so you can do that for any kind of the junk when you have absolutely. to put in an email. And then if it's like, if you just see this, e- you know, email at junk at Gmail, you're oh. just, okay, well, this is obviously a junk email. I'm not going to open this. Yeah. Or you can automatically set different rules up to send it right to spam and or just delete it automatically. Interesting. Right? So, um, that's cool. So that's one way. Uh, another one is obviously don't know who it is. Do not click on it. Do not pass code. Do not click $200. Right? That's the <laughs> most simplest one. Yeah. Right? Straight to jail. Right? It's like <laughs> I tell you, Amazon, your <laughs> you password know has changed. Like, I didn't change my password. Delete. You know what has right. gotten me recent? has almost gotten me recently? Uh, I've started to get texts that, that says that, uh, your hey, your uh, package, your bank account. Uh, yeah, your package, uh, 
was not delivered yeah. mm -hmm. or couldn't be delivered here, click here to uh, uh, to resolve it. Yep. Yeah. Right. It's a phishing attempt. It yep. sounds like, and it sounds so legit, but then so like, I, I've noticed that if you look in the URLs. Oh, they're wonky. Uh, it, it, yeah, there's yeah. there's always something there that keeps it from being USPS. So it, it's, it's like, like USPC. Yeah. Or you know they've they've got they've got one or, or uh, Netflix was Neftlix, N E F T L I X. All these people who have dyslexia are like Which, accidentally clicking. Oh, on these yeah, they're, they're like, <laughs> no. Netflix needs my information. <laughs> well, there's um there's software you've heard of it uh, that's called Pegasus, um, where they don't even need to text you anymore if they want to hack your phone. This is like super high high level government, um, where literally before. The first version of Pegasus, I believe, they could just text you, and you open the text message. Your phone is entirely compromised. That's how advanced that Spyro was. Actually, can you do a quick search, Aaron? Type in uh, Pegasus um, hacking podcast goes phone. Out. I heard that if you go to the if you if you do the search, it automatically hacks your computer. I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> yeah, hit, hit the Wikipedia. Dang it. Dang it, it's true. Um, it's spyware that was developed by an Israeli cyber arms company. Uh, that can be covertly installed on mobile phones, and you wouldn't even realize it's on your phone uh, and exploit your entire phone. And before, I believe the first version, that it literally could just text you, and if you open the text message, it installed on your phone. Yep. Now, it's called the root kit. Now they don't need to do that. You just, whatever phone number that you want, they can get onto that phone. But this is like, not something like your Cody like hacker has to access. Be, you'd have to this be is, reasoned. Like somebody who has this has the resources for this. The Israeli right? government or the United States yeah. government. So like if you're on a watch list or something. Yes, right? the government knows. Yeah. Edward Snowden knows or yeah. did know. So <laughs> well, everything goes through five hubs in the United States. So anyways. Was it? Yeah, 75 percent of all website traffic flows through Northern Virginia. Yep. So of all worldwide traffic flows through Northern Virginia. Wow. So, yeah, you think the CIA, which, by the way, who hosts the Am Amazon servers or so? Yeah. Who hosts the CIA servers? Amazon. That's AWS. AWS. That's why Amazon the, has the a facility in the North Virginia. The compliance and the governance around that is just insane. Wild. If right. you ever get the chance to visit a data center, I encourage it because the security getting into one is is like the reverse of getting out of a prison. It is insane. And then if you, even if you're in a data center, there's different areas of a data center that have different levels of security based on the information that they send and receive. Your bank has less security than a data center. That's why. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. banks put, you know, security controls in place. They never have more than, you know, X amount of dollars True. every day. You have to notify So you're saying there's not one dude, like, in a basement at AWS. <laughs> does, anybody else, I mean, <laughs> does anybody else feel like Dropbox is not actually in a data center? But it's actually just a guy with some folders. <laughs> you just dragging around here. Oh. With how long it takes sometimes. <laughs> Hold on a second. Hold on a second. I know it's here somewhere. All right. He's like, he's Aaron. Like, he's like, Aaron file needs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let me start with like, the Z's. Uh... Z. <laughs> God. I mean, you also have the Federal Reserve in Richmond. I'm not gold in, in that basement they got. Yeah, but gold's heavy. I know. How are you gonna get away with that? Right? Never so it, it's they uh, doing uh, what uh, Italian job? Yeah, they did <laughs> Italian job. Yeah, those freaking those, those minis. Those mini I need five mini Coopers that are souped up. Wait, uh, you've seen Italian job? No, but oh, I, okay. I know <laughs> that they put gold in cars. <laughs> <laughs> because I just said it. Is that what? Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. God. Oh man, we really do have to work. All right, on so the you have place. you have your email. Well, actually, you have your one phone. thing we can talk about is social engineering. Yeah. So, you, but you have your your wallet, so like the a Ridge wallet. So your, your daily carry. Your yeah. daily your EDC, right? Yep, EDC. Uh, the show is not sponsored by Ridge Wallet, even though they sponsor plenty of YouTube podcasts. Ridge Wallet, hope you're listening. If you want access to all 17 of our followers, right? <laughs> <laughs> we have 4,300 subscribers. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, so your wallet, your keys, which I don't have keys, but you can't put... It's recommended that you can have like a small like Faraday box in your house and put your key fob or keys in it when you get home, because again, someone can literally just be outside your house and steal your keys uh, information, and <laughs> like uh, just because it's on your desk. 
a good a good idea of that is uh, Roku, you know the TV. Mm-hmm. Like they call it the uh, Roku drive bys. There's a bunch of TikToks out there right now of people like driving by and just having Roku remote and just like pointing at people's TVs. Oh, and just, just to mess with them and just turning oh, people's TVs off. You know, you know that was like the old school <laughs> days of the universal remote oh, where you yeah, can be outside yeah. and you're messing. So every one, so, ro- but that's the thing. One Roku TV yeah. remote works for every single TV. Yeah. I, you know what? There was a guy <laughs> I went to school with named TJ, and he was a bad kid. He stole cars and he was oh, he was man. a bad kid. But I just remember one day he walked in and said, looked over at me and said, want to watch some TV? Because there was TVs in all the classrooms. And he just brought a universal remote to school. Yep. And I just, just all <laughs> day. <laughs> hey, I watched Aaron, those. I watched the up, teachers uh, just Flipper. losing their um, mind. Flipper Zero. The TV kept coming on. And it's they were like, it's just that little device, yeah, that orange thing. And it was awesome great because other device. teachers, it, other teachers were conferring with each other. That happened to me I too. It's been all day. <laughs> no, it's it's yeah, this thing. I love TJ. So, so <laughs> this thing right here has. It's your uh, worst nightmare. Uh, the gray module or the green module in the end is actually a Wi-Fi adapter. So that's what I was talking about earlier, to where it's like I can actually attack your Wi-Fi, gain access to your network, and then I can spoof it. Yeah, but that's not dangerous, though. Look at that dolphin. He's cute. Absolutely, right? It's It's a cute little dolphin. I can mimic uh, RFID cards. So it's like I walk by you, and I can get access to your door now. Now I have access to this building. Oh, you know what? Those are Chinese characters. He probably is a bad character. (laughs) Aaron! (laughs) Well, he's in tech. Aaron! (laughs) Bro, Look, are we and just gonna, this are we video just, has been flagged. <laughs> we're not, are we're we, not even monetized anymore. Are we anymore, just going to so act like whatever. Huawei didn't uh, happen? <laughs> Aaron. Are we just going to act like Huawei didn't happen? <laughs> Woo. Anyways, Woo. continue. So, um, yeah, you so can, you is can this like just available online? People yeah, can buy yes. it? Yeah, it's like a hobby tool. Right? Is or, it, or, wait, so so it's, it's, not a, it's not illegal to purchase? It is not. No. It can get you in trouble if you use it improperly. Yeah. Right. You walk in the wrong building with it, and like sometimes. What's the What's the legal application for this? Pen testing. It's a pen testing tool. Uh, yeah. okay. So so okay. you can have a white hat. So there's Aaron. There's there's three hats: white, gray, and black. Right. So you actually have your white hat, who's actually hired to come into a, a building, saying, "Hey, I want you to pen test our employees, our business, and making sure we're up to you know whatever insert compliance here, and then see what vulnerabilities and exploits are you know available, and then." Charge us to make recommendations to secure Wait, this. On, on, so real, before you go to the next two hats, <laughs> yeah, sure. on the first hat, wouldn't a company be more secure if it's in an o- if had all of its employees in an office and did pen testing versus an entire company that went virtual and no, having not necessarily true remote? Because if one or two different people, because those people I mean, are that's, that's a very because their home is more likely not going to be. Yeah, secure yes, in a way. Yes and no, because it depends on the the nature of what they do. You can right? be remote remote desktoping in, right? Well, yeah. I mean, I could have thin. So you have thin clients, which are just bare minimal computers, right? Not your fancy Macs over here. I can have a five hundred dollar computer that literally only does one thing: connects to another computer. That is behind sec- additional security controls, not to get too convoluted in, in technicals. But I can be on a VPN behind firewalls in a tenant that is in the office or whatever data center that is our tenants for our, so if that computer gets compromised, stolen or whatever, I can remote wipe it. Uh, the hard drive's encrypted. So if they take the hard drive out of it, they're not gonna get any data off of it. You can have policies in place to where you no know employees allowed to save anything locally. Everything gets saved to Google Drive and or OneDrive or other cloud services that are out there or SharePoint or whatever. So now those machines aren't really a liability anymore because there's nothing on them. I remember right? when I was an Intel analyst walking into that <clears throat> government building on the Navy base that had no windows and you had to take your phone, keys, yeah. USB card, dr- drive or whatever in, in your pockets and you had to put them into a small locker and then you can walk inside. I used to walk in offices all day that just had walls of cubbies and you just saw phones. It's like, I can take like $3,000 worth of the phones here. Yeah, you know, when you, like you know a building's an Intel building when there's no windows on, like I remember, uh, it was, uh, wasn't Little Creek, what's up, the Navy base oh, yeah. um, by ODU. Anyways, um, it's a, it was like a two-story building and it was just a square brick. Yep. Uh, hey, that's all. And then a door. Like, that's an Intel building. Yo, let really, me tell you about it's a, really secure when you're underground. Yeah. Hey, let me tell you about a weird house that I shot. <laughs> Right. Did a cat die? No. <laughs> I'm never no. going to let this go. Okay. <laughs> there so was this copper mesh everywhere. <laughs> right. There right. probably was here. Um, okay, so I, I drive out, and this is the farthest I've ever dr- driven for a shoot. It was it was like two hours, maybe an hour and 50 minutes. And so it's in the middle of absolutely nowhere. 
and uh, mm -hmm. in the yard there's a helipad. Okay, and there's when I when I get out to go to the house there's an Irish wolfhound that comes out and they're really friendly. But that's the biggest dog breed. Period. Yeah. They're bigger than Great Danes. Yeah. Um, and they have the strongest bite, so they can they can break your femur. So this family has been uh, they've been they have a few kids and but the 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 husband and wife have been married for thirty years and she has never known what he did for work. Their whole marriage. Oh. Right. So Wait. he. He comes. He he lives at home for uh, uh, three days a week, right? So he has a he he just has a three day weekend mm -hmm. every weekend, and he flies to D.C. He has his wife has a direct. They have a phone that only calls the other phone. Yep. That's so she has a direct line to him, and uh, he he flies to D.C. and uh, works. Uh, sh they said like three hundred feet underground, mm -hmm. right? And so, but th she has never known what he does for work. She said one day there was a drone that was flying around their house and she calls him on, on the line and says, hey, there's a drone outside. Is that it, do, is that reason for any, any concern? He's like, no, nah, it's fine. And then uh, <laughs> in like 30 <laughs> minutes, there's helicopters flying around their house. And uh, it was it was just it was just wild because like they they live like completely off the grid and just like it is a wild situation. And they have this dog that's meant for killing somebody if, they, <laughs> yeah. if, if, if yep. she needs it to. So wow! It, just really, it, really, really interesting. Yeah, and, they, and and also the house was built to some really. So they probably did have this Faraday cage situation because their house was built to some really exact specifications. Uh, their their and it was probably had a panic room and everything. I'm yes, sure. there was yeah, a panic would, room. Yeah. Uh, there was uh, but there was like, it, it's hard to describe. So when you talk about custom houses, you're usually talking about luxury homes. Mm -hmm. This was not a luxury home. This was Functional. like this was. A hundred percent functional, like customized functionality. Yeah, and it was just really, really interesting to see, like. And they were listing it for sale, and that's why you were. They doing were listing the it for sale, and I was yeah. there to take photos. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Wow. Hmm. So interesting. In the movie, nobody. No. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? This is this is a, this is a new segment. Gonna go? I'm going to ask a movie every podcast now. We're gonna we're gonna start tallying it up every. It's gonna every be the time. most random movie ever, and he's gonna say yes. Yeah, I've seen oh, it. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> the one movie that doesn't make sense for him to see, he's seen. It. <laughs> We finally Monty got him Python and the Holy Grail. Absolutely. Oh, okay. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Sure. yeah. We got him to watch Snatch. Hey. Yeah. There you go. All right. Felt, okay. So you personal what? stuff, I think we got pretty much covered. Businesses. That's another podcast for another day. Uh, I mean, I guess. Because how much time we have. I mean, yeah. I can cover that in like four minutes. It's fine. All right. Um. So yeah. business is the biggest uh, exploit there is, or people. Um. And how to protect that is through two things. Um. Least privilege, which is the idea of you need the least amount of privileges to do your job and no more. And you have separation of duties. So you handle finances and you handle whatever. You guys do not touch anything. He reports to you or vice versa, blah, 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 blah. Or you have uh, system administration, right? You have different systems. Aaron's a developer. Nine times out of ten, developers will never touch a web server. Ever. Right? Because it's just an additional, right? So... Um, that's in technical stuff. How to protect documentation, version control, right? Every person you have an audit log, and this all goes down to compliance and governance. You have all these policies you put into place to uh, tell your employees if you do this, you get fired, which is a pretty good deterrent. Hey, I need to get paid, so I'm not going to screw you over, essentially, right? Um, so. And when you say the biggest threat is people, you're saying disgruntled people, employees. Oh yeah, okay. So right. so that element I, of it. So, so somebody working and with nefarious intent within yeah. the organization, but also couldn't it be like them unwillingly. Uh, That's laziness. Yep. Well, that no, but but like unintentionally clicking on a link or like signing up for something yes. and then exposing the business. So being somewhere. being uh, a novice, right, mm -hmm. or like not properly trained, right? Mm -hmm. But that goes again into your policies, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like password policies, email policy, acceptable use policies. Hey, you shouldn't go to these websites. You should only be on these kind of services. You shouldn't be looking at this kind of stuff. If you are, you're not supposed to, and that's yeah. supposed to be documented somewhere. Um, as a business, you should always, 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 doesn't matter what business you are, have a firewall. Don't care who you are, put a firewall on there. Add what's called DNS filtering because 99% of the stuff will just, you click on something, it'll just be like, oh, can't find it. This is a blocked known website. Just reach out to your system admin if you're supposed to see this stuff. And your system admin will go, no, you're stupid. Don't click on that shit. 
here's a retraining on what emails to click and not click. See this, insert compliance here, right? Or insert policy here, and then go from there. So um, a very large attack that happens on people is what's called social engineering. Hey, I am said so-and-so person, I need this by now. You have this expedited result that gets some low level employee going, oh crap, the CEO is calling me right now. First of all, why the hell would the CEO be calling you out of some Fortune 500 company? Mm -hmm. Never. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, or texting you, hey, this is, you know, I, what's the update on this? Like that, that's actually a text that's going out right now. Uh, Mary was telling me about that actually. Um, her employees are like, why is the CEO texting me? It's like, yep. uh, why would the CEO be texting you? Yeah. You don't even know him. Yeah. Like, are you stupid? No. Yeah. Don't answer that email or don't answer that text. So that's one. So that's social engineering. Um, falsifying who people are um, and then trying to wiggle their way into uh, a, a privileged account to get access or just to view stuff and we, to see and watch. We, yeah, yep. we had a we had a client that they had a vendor that, uh, you know, uh, somebody represent, re represent, represented themselves as a vendor yep. to their accounts payable department, right? And and it was again to your point they were adding urgency to it they were like this needs to be paid otherwise mm -hmm. we can't com con continue to supply you right and uh and the employee just processed it right through I their have. bank and then the bank fortunately enough is so old school <laughs> the bank that they were using everything needs to actually be approved by a person a human being yep. at the bank and they hadn't gotten to that process yet so a few hours later they were able to stop the yep. transaction right i actually had a uh, prospect <laughs> this is actually kind of funny i had a prospect send me an incorrect check for four thousand dollars more than what i quoted them yeah and we had this back and forth whole dialogue like hey i need you to send a half up front to get the yep. project started because you're across the united states and then we'll do half later and we'll beat you to milestone. And he goes, I'll give you the full amount. It was like 18 grand. I'm like, I'm not going to check this. What? No. I'm like, this is the wrong amount. Send the correct amount. He goes, oh, it's fine. Just go ahead and check it. You know, just ripped it up and threw it in the trash. I'm like, no, why am I going to do that? So like, they, so like social engineering is always like creating this urgency. Uh, another uh, one is um, walking into a building. You'll be actually really surprised how many buildings you can walk into with a yellow vest and a clipboard. And or just, with the ladder, or with the ladder, walk under the ladder. Like you own, you the look place. like a professional. And just yeah. well, well, not just that, yeah. but just that demeanor. You act like you own the place, and yeah. you just walk in. And you're just like looking around, like, oh, don't worry, the building manager taught me to be here. Yeah. No one's gonna question that. Do you know the building manager? Probably not. Yeah, I've I've, like, I've heard of people uh, using uh, courier because yeah. courier, courier services are big in, in in larger cities. Yeah. And so they say you can get anywhere with a courier's uniform on. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Which is why we There's have a lot of YouTube prank channels, man traps, which is what you guys are starting to implement where Ryan's starting to do the build out for it because yeah. you don't want someone just waltzing right into here, waltzing, sure. walking right into here. Yeah. Right. I, yeah. I, I so. do see a lot of people waltzing these days. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of waltzers, a lot of waltzers, some yeah. jazz, some two step. Wow. We covered yeah. a lot of bases here. Yeah. And there's still there's so lot. much more. Yeah, and it's, it's crazy, but don't yeah. click on shit. You don't know. Use a password manager. And audit yourself like you audit your finances, and you'll be fine. If yeah. you even do that. Yeah. <laughs> I totally do Don't that. be lazy. Like, it's yeah. your information is, is, is more valuable than money. And if it comes to your identity. It, it is your is money, a, too. So, like, <laughs> Yeah, it is. It all ties together. But yeah, anyways, I think that's enough beating the, the horse dead with the baseball bat. <laughs> don't, kill, don't kill a cat. Uh, I'm not going to kill a cat. Not amazing. even going to kill any cats. Not even going to kill a horse like Cody. <laughs> what? What? Kill the horse? Just talk. Uh, you just just describing this concludes a horse. this episode of the Think Fresh Food Four podcast. We'll see you next week. Ow. <laughs>